and close your eyes and watch your breath. And you're the one who has to watch it, no one else can watch it for you. That's in watching it that the mind gets strengthened. You strengthen good qualities inside, so the mind is more and more under your control. You learn how to depend on yourself. We talk about taking refuge in the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. It's not like they're going to come out and fight off our enemies for us. It's that they set good examples for us. The Buddha through his life and his teachings, the Dhamma through the teachings that are more and more specific about what we can do to gain more skillful control over our minds. And the Sangha and also setting good examples and showing that it wasn't just the Buddha who could gain awakening. Other people can gain awakening as well by following his teachings. So these are the people we follow. We follow their example, and their example provides a refuge, because otherwise there are people out there in the world who tell us all kinds of things, tell us that our actions don't matter, we go ahead and just do as we like, don't have to worry about the consequences, because the consequences don't make any difference. There's nothing to you at all that's going to last after you pass away, so who cares? I mean, that kind of teaching you hear outside all the time. And that can lead people to do all kinds of unskillful things. And so we protect ourselves from those examples by remembering the example of the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. Because that's the other meaning of the word sarana, which is usually translated as refuge. It also means something you remember, something you hold in mind. That this is what a person who found true happiness learned how to do and taught to us. Other people have followed example and they pass the teaching along because it works. Take that as your external example and then you build these good qualities inside so that you become your own refuge. As the Buddha said, it's by establishing mindfulness that you become your own refuge. And that means being clear about what's skillful, what's unskillful in the mind, trying to get rid of unskillful qualities, develop skillful ones so the mind finally settles down and is clear about what's going on inside. Then you can be more and more effective in the control you have over the mind. So it's in this way that you take the example of the Buddha and you bring it inside, so that you become your own refuge. And you remember and you remember this as well. Because it's all too easy when emotions get really strong to forget the Buddhist teachings. It's almost like you go into another world where the Buddha doesn't matter at all. True happiness doesn't matter at all. What matters is what you can, what you want right now. It's like you know, bad being in a bad dream. You need mindfulness to remember, okay, there is another reality, not this false reality you have where only your emotions matter. And the alertness to watch what's actually going on, to realize that this is not a skillful state of mind. And that ardency is what gets you out of the bad dream. So the Buddha is basically telling us to wake up so we can depend our, on ourselves. That way the refuge that he, he establishes in the world becomes a refuge in our own hearts, is what should, which is where it really matters, where we can depend on ourselves. And we don't forget all the good things that we've learned, so that when we really need them, they're there to give us help.